Um, yeah, it's a psychological thriller, a sort of novel of suspense, and it um, centers on the relationship between sisters. Um, these two sisters who've had a very difficult relationship and haven't spoken to each other for years. And at the beginning of the book, one of them dies in mysterious circumstances, and her younger sister has to try and figure out what's happened to her, and um, uncovers a whole lot of mysteries in the, in the process. <laughs> Um, yes, um, it's been optioned by DreamWorks, who made the movie of The Girl on the Train, and the script is being writ written at the moment, as far as I'm aware, um, and I'll, I'll be consulting on the script with this one, so um, hopefully see it in cinemas in the next couple of years, maybe. It's really strange, actually, um, but, I mean, obviously it's, it's very exciting, but it's very it's a very odd experience to see characters that you created sort of wandering around in front of you. Um, obviously, telling a story visually is very different to telling it on the page, so it brings out different things in the characters, I think, and you start to, you feel a slightly different way about things that when you see it on screen. But I had a very, I had a happy experience with Hollywood. Well, who did I like when I was studying? I can't even remember very well. We did lots of very... Um, we did lots of English philosophy, people like Hobbes and Locke, very difficult, impenetrable stuff, you know, old things, Descartes, that kind of stuff. I think what I actually enjoyed was, a lot more, was the, were the existentialists I read when I was um, studying French and we did Sartre and Camus and that kind of thing. That was much more fun. Than... As a writer, I think Camus. I loved um, L'Etranger, uh, The Outsider, it was, I, it was a a big favourite of mine when I was a teenager. <laughs> My favourite writer is a woman called Kate Atkinson, who's a British novelist who writes, well she writes literary fiction and she also writes crime novels. Um, her crime novels are, well, sort of private detective stories, but they're very beautifully written and constructed and full of wonderful characters. Um, I'm a fan of Pat Barker, another female British novelist who writes Mostly books set during First World War and Second World War. I like Cormac McCarthy. Um, I'm a fan of Sebastian Barry, who's an Irish writer. So I tend to read mostly contemporary literary fiction, mostly from the UK. And I can't actually say that for sure. Um, I'm because I have. I don't think I've had enough feedback from both to make a comparison. I think there is a sense to which women are, well, are going to identify more closely with the characters, most of which, I mean, the protagonists who are female and who are going through, you know, who are talk we're talking about the challenges that women face about motherhood, about domestic violence, about those things that women may feel slightly different, differently about. Um, so there probably is a, um, a, a difference in that respect, but I haven't had you know, I haven't had loads of feedback from men saying, your book's terrible, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm a feminist, and I think they're, they are feminist books. Um, I don't necessarily sit down and think about, I am going to now write a feminist book, but that's, your, you know, one's politics comes through in what one writes. So yes, there is certainly um, a political angle to them, aspect to them, yeah. I say to them probably what most writers say to them, which is read a lot and write every day. And the thing I always say is that you need to find a reader quite early on when you're um, someone who will read your work to give you feedback, a friend or whoever, someone from your writing group. Because I think that a, one of the big problems that new writers have is that they don't show anything to anyone, they're kind of too nervous, and then they get locked inside their own head. And you never, you never progress, really, unless you get some feedback. So that would be my number one thing. Oh, there's so many things around memory that I find interesting. Um, and obviously, in The Girl on the Train, I talked about it in a really specific way, which is about a woman who can't remember because she drinks too much. And that's a very specific problem. And I was interested in, in what that does to you if you can't remember what you did yesterday how that changes your sense of self and your relationships to other people and your sense of guilt and responsibility. It has all sorts of implications. But in Into the Water, I was thinking more of the more general failure of memory, which we all have. We remember things from childhood and we cling to them and we, we think we remember mm -hmm. specific events with, with great clarity. 
and then we'll discover as an adult that actually we don't remember it properly at all, it happened in a completely different way, or you weren't there that day at all and you've just seen a photograph of it and you've created a story around it. And usually these things are not that important, but I was wondering what if the, the thing, your misremembered, uh, that misremembered recollection becomes, is fundamental to you and what does that do to you when you discover that it's not true? And we all have these things, I mean, it's well documented. I read an essay by Oliver Sacks where he talks about this and that there's no, even on an MRI scan and a neurological scan, you cannot tell the difference between real and fake memory. They, they appear the same way on a scan. And it's just a weird thing that we, we rely on this so much and it's so much of who we are and who we become. And yet it's very unreliable. <laughs> We see everyone thinks their memory is good. I think my memory is good, but I have had this conversation with my mother where I'll talk about something and she'll look at me and go, what are you talking about? That never happened. And I could have sworn this thing happened when I was a child. And it doesn't, you know, it's not important, but it's very strange when that happens to you, that kind of, oh, that's very disconcerting.